I've noticed something unfair about YouTube and I want to briefly touch on it. I don't produce content that often. I'm working on a user interface documentary. That means I'm not producing content for this channel actively in general. However, over the past few days, I've taken a few pieces of time out of my day to show the work that I was already doing, to show the things that I'm already involved with, and do so in live streams. Live streams being long form content. I also reposted one live stream as a video. I noticed a couple of months ago that my Windows 11 must be stopped video, which went from a, uh, like a thousand views to, in about three months' time, over 1.6 million views and rocketed my channel from 1,400 subscribers to over 35,000 subscribers today, that that video tanked dramatically a couple of months ago. The views, the revenue, all of it went... And this happened a couple of months ago. Now, normally I would attribute such things to summer, but we're talking about this video being huge during summer and taking a dramatic plummet that doesn't really line up quite right with end of summer, beginning of school. Really, there's no good explanation for it, especially in light of its recent success. What recent success might that be? Well, in the past couple of days, the views on that video have again gone up. They've gone up quite a bit. I got down to the point where, uh, let's see, let me just wind back here. My channel's views in total were floating between 1,800 and 2,200 views. And this is, this is per day for all videos. So we're talking the Windows 11 video plus everything else in my entire back catalog. But here's, here's what happens. I have this huge jump in the graph. So on September 9th, this is the first anomaly. September 8th, I got 2,239 views. September 9th, 2022, I got 2,941 views. Now, you can account for that pretty easily because the live streaming question that I did that day got 700 views. Okay, so I got a spike from that live stream. Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy, right? The next day I got 2,460. Well, now wait a minute, that, that's what, uh, 100, 200, 220 more views than I got. But that, that could just be Saturday. I mean, if I go back a few weeks, um, I had 3,300 views at one particular peak back in August. So th I'm looking at the chart. It's like, okay, I've had anomalies like that, but that's happened before, right? But then here, look, Sunday, September 11th, 3,394 views. And then Monday, September 12th, 5,250 views. And now I'm looking over here, and my last 48 hours, I'm maintaining at least that much. And it looks like what's going on is because I started doing live streams... Now I'm getting rocketed up in the stats. Now I'm getting more views because I did that one live stream and I continue to stream. Now they're cranking up views on this other video. So this is part of the problem that I have, the, the inherent unfairness with YouTube. And I haven't gone and looked to see what else I was doing at the time that the original explosion of that video happened. But it was a dramatic explosion. In fact, if I go over here and I say... Last year, you can see this humongous section of this chart here where it was about April 2022, a, almost a year after that video was published. Things just explode, but then they tanked in July. But then, around the end of July, or near the end of July, they exploded again for a brief time. Now, I'm going to go back to my content library, and I'm going to actually look in real time at what I was doing. So, May... I posted a whole bunch of videos here. In May, I'm actually noticing I posted quite a few. Um, and that's because of the success of the original Windows 11 video. But if I go back here to before that happened, um, yeah, I was posting quite a bit of content in March, April, uh, May. I was posting quite consistently. It seems at least a video a week. If I go back to the content list, and we had that lull in July, right? So if we have a lull in July, what was I doing in July of 2022? Let's see, I posted 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six videos in June. And I kept posting in July. But the stuff I posted in, in June and July, a lot of it was shorts. So as far as actual full-length videos, I posted one in June. And in July, I'm counting a couple of normal length ones. But here's the thing. I'm looking at this, and what I see is that when I post other content on YouTube, YouTube starts promoting that Windows 11 video again. The bottom line is that if the Windows 11 video is interesting to an audience, YouTube should be promoting it the same way regardless of what I'm doing with other stuff. And there's way too much that's going to that video that can be explained by other videos that you just can't look at the other videos traffic and go okay I can see where clearly the audience on this video hopped over to this much bigger video and watched it too because I, I'm looking um, what is it that spike in July um, I got uh, I made a video with 3,000 what's that 3,000 views so far um, that's so far over the past couple of months but it didn't have that many at the time and even if it had like 3,000 at the time, the point is I got way more views on that Windows 11 video after that video went up than 3,000. So YouTube is not promoting that Windows 11 video unless I workhorse long-form content on a regular basis, period. They're basically not showing people that are interested in that video the content of that video unless I make other videos, which means that I have to work on more videos or the revenue stream from that collapses, the views collapse, the subscriber growth collapses, the channel collapses if I don't make new content on a regular basis. So I'm going to guess that this is YouTube's way of making people work for them, but I think that it's inherently very unfair both to me and to the people who want to watch my content because I should not have to make new content for my back catalog that you would be interested in to get promoted. That doesn't even make any sense. Oh, something finished on that computer. But I, I don't think that this is fair, and I think that YouTube should stop doing it. In fact, I filled out the creator survey this morning, and when they asked for feedback regarding you know their tools or whatever, I said, this is a problem. When I have content that I post, it should be promoted the same way regardless of when I post it, regardless of what I post around it. It should generally be promoted the same way. Now, I don't expect them to be like, oh, well, you're not posting any videos, so no one's going to find this you know, other video through your existing videos. But I think that the fact that it took a year for the Windows 11 video to jump off and reach 1.6 million views in what, frankly, is a scary amount of time, just three months or so, I think that that's a humongous failure on the part of YouTube. What the fuck was that? So, now I've heard either a really nasty backfire or a gunshot outside. So I'm guessing that the YouTube gods are coming to get me. That's why I had to get up and walk away. I think you might have heard it if you listened really carefully. So maybe I shouldn't talk about this, otherwise I'll get executed by Susan, you know, the boss at YouTube. Who knows? But look, the bottom line is that if I make content, it should be promoted to the people who want to see the content. And the people should decide if they want to see it or not. The problem is that if I don't make other content, you don't get to see the content that I made before. So I am strongly incentivized to keep making content no matter how shitty it is, just so that YouTube will keep promoting the stuff that cranks in all the views and all the money. And this is part of the reason that I don't like the idea of making YouTube my full-time job, because I have watched in real time as the revenue stream completely dried up. Um, I don't want to say the exact numbers that I was making at the peaks there, but the bottom line is that the amount of money coming in was decimated. And um, actually, I would say even worse than decimated. Um, we are talking an order of magnitude less money one month after everything went down. So 
yeah, it's it's a little bit scary just the thought that I have to produce content. What if I end up in the hospital for a month? You know what ends up happening if I end up in the hospital for a month? Because I have, I don't know, internet butthurt disease or something? I won't be able to have that video. I can't rely on that video getting promoted and thus the revenue stream supporting me. And that's not safe. That means that if I have a problem that takes me out for a month or two, I lose all my income. So if you wonder why more people that, you know, I mean, obviously I don't think that I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread, but if you, I know that I have enough talent and skill and knowledge and stuff. People want to watch my videos. They want to hear what I have to say. They are interested in my content, whether that content is this, where I'm just talking to a camera about a, a particular topic, or it's something more technical, complicated. You know, I just did a live stream showing off the Surface RT this morning, and people were interested in it. But if you wonder why people like me don't put a lot of effort into content like this, stuff that you actually might be interested in watching, except polishing it up and making it look good, it's because YouTube incentivizes two things. Frequent videos, long-form content. They want me to make videos longer than 10 minutes. They want me to make at least one a week. If I don't do that, they take away my money. They take away my money regardless of the merits of the content in question. They take away my money because I'm not working enough for them. And okay, I understand the site dies if people don't make videos. The problem is, it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. See, Linus Tech Tips, for example, huge YouTuber, millions and millions of subscribers. All of his videos get absolutely flooded with watches. He's got a whole media company that just exists so that he can make YouTube videos on a few different channels. And he can do that because he's already grown it to that point and he has an entire team. If something bad happens, he has other guys making videos. He has a whole bunch of other people that help him. He has other content that doesn't rely on him. I'm one guy. I don't have anybody working for me. I have people ask to work for me. That has happened before. But I can't pay you based on YouTube money. I don't know if that money's going to be here next month. And I've already been put into a position where I, I opened up a little office as a studio. It costs a certain amount a month. And once the stuff tanked, now I'm already paying for it out of pocket. I'm already not making enough money per month, at least on a small, on a temporary short basis. I'm, I've already got one month, at least, that I'm not making as much money as the studio requires. Now, you'd think that I would just shut the studio down. Here's the thing. That whole nice presentation thing with the table and the backdrop and the good lighting and all that, I don't have the room for that here. I just don't. I can't set that up here. I need room for workbenches. I have so many jobs, my head is going to fall off. And that's, that's just it. I can't do computers and YouTube at the same time easily unless I make content like what you're watching right now. This is low effort. Do you know how much work I've actually put into this? I set up the camera, I set up this microphone and USB powered audio interface and focus and blah blah blah, but at the end of the day, this is pretty easy. This is a really simple process to set this up and just start talking. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. I'm probably not even going to edit this. Watch me have to edit it because I've said that and cursed myself. So this low effort stuff, this is what YouTube basically pushes me towards. Live streaming and just chattering on. I want to make nice polished videos, but it takes friggin' time. It takes a lot more time when you've got all these computers to work on. It just, yeah, making YouTube my main job is too risky. Until I have a high level of success, I just can't do it. Now, I do want to say one more thing. If you've gotten this far, you clearly care about what I'm talking about, you care about my content, blah, blah, blah. I want to talk for a second about the problem with giving me money. Now, yeah, it sounds really weird for me to say, oh, there's a problem with giving me money. But there is. See, if you give me a super thanks, the little thing where you give $5 through the little heart on a YouTube video or whatever, if you give me a super chat, any of those methods by which YouTube lets you directly give me money, that doesn't give me as much money as you think it does. YouTube takes something to the tune of a 30% cut of that money. So, even though you can flash your status in a live chat or have a little heart beside your comment if you use YouTube's payment systems, the truth is, if you pay me through PayPal or through Coffee, which 
just really just uses PayPal um, through Subscribestar, any of the payment methods that are on jodybruchon.com, if you give me money through those, I get more money. And it's not just a little bit. We're talking, if let's say you gave me $1,000 because you're insane. Why the hell are you giving me $1,000? I don't make content worth $1,000. But let's say you give me $1,000. That's your choice. You want to do that. You love what I'm doing. You want to see more of it. You want to relieve some of my financial pressure so I can do it. If you can give that $1,000 through a super chat or super thanks versus PayPal, Coffee, Flatter, Libera Pay, you know, all those different methods that I make available, you're talking about a difference of 30% versus, I don't know, 3 to 5%. Let's go with the high figure there, 5%. Let's just assume, because usually it's less, but 5% versus 30%, that's a 25% difference out of $1,000. That means YouTube takes an extra $250 cut. If it was $10, YouTube takes an extra $2.50 above what those other processors will take. If you use something like PayPal, it tends to be the lowest. I think Subscribestar might be a little bit more of a hit, but it's more regular, so to some extent, who cares? It's not as big of a deal. Anyway, the bottom line is you need to look into the payment processors that are used to support creators. You need to probably steer clear of the YouTube ones and instead go to directly to whatever it is that supports them more directly with less overhead. Middlemen are a freaking curse upon this society. Me wanting to give you money or you wanting to give me money and each of us take that money, that's something where I feel like we should be able to just do that. If I want to say something to you and you want to listen, or vice versa, we should be able to do that freely. Middlemen make that difficult. YouTube makes that difficult. PayPal makes that difficult. YouTube's monetary benefit system makes that difficult because now you have to play by the guidelines of some middleman when all you want to do is just hand me a $10 bill. They, they take a cut and they restrict what I can say and do. And I hate that. So at a minimum... You know, we have to accept it because electronic payment systems, they're just, there's no way that some guy in Romania is going to come here, hand me 10 US dollars, and fly back. That's insane. So we have to accept some degree of compromise. What I'm encouraging you to do is look into the various payment processors that creators use to make money and try to use the one that is the least harmful, the one that is the least censorious the one that takes the least off the top of the money that you're trying to give them. Because if you want to give someone $100, you'd be pretty pissed if you found out that you gave someone $100 and then their boss, so to speak, took 30 of those dollars away from them. That's kind of shitty, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what YouTube does. That's why I don't particularly like Super Thanks and Super Chats as a payment method because they take so much of that money. You know, I want to take YouTube's ad money. I want all their ad revenue to go into my wallet so I can spend that money on things that I believe in, on better things. I want to use that money to free myself up. But I don't want to give YouTube money. I don't want you to pay YouTube money that they take a whole bunch of and keep for themselves when you really just meant for that money to go to me. So try to pay me or any other creator with the best way that you can find out of all the possibilities. This is the end of my rant. Thank you so much for watching. You know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. More comment. More comment. Oh my god. More content. More content forthcoming. Take care.